Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with our fourth chapter of video engineering that is high definition TV. Okay. So the first point that begins the chapter with is MAC signal. So the another point into this is MAC signal encoding. Firstly, we will know what is MAC and what is the full form of MAC. So, the full form of MAC is multiplexed analog component signal. So, this is the signal that was developed by Independent Broadcasting Authority in UK. It was developed by Independent Broadcasting Authority in UK. So basically what is MAC signal? It is a TV transmission standard. It is a satellite TV transmission standard. And the purpose behind developing this sort of TV transmission standard was to obtain the clear picture quality for clear picture quality via direct broadcasting satellites. You can note down these points starting from what is the full form of MAC that is multiplexed analog component signal it was developed in UK by independent broadcasting authority that is IBA and it is nothing but the satellite TV transmission standard which was developed to obtain the clear picture quality via broadcasting satellites. As for now we have seen what is the basics of MAC and what is the MAC signal? Here we come up with the diagrammatic representation of how a MAC signal looks of a digital data starting from left to right. It is in the packetized form. You can see the conversion starting from left towards its right. So this is nothing but the simulated MAC signal from left to right of digital data. There are many broadcasting variants for MAC standard. So as we have understood now MAC signal form is nothing but a standard that was developed for the purpose of clear picture quality. So it does come with few different types of variants into it. Means few changes are made into the MAC signal for improvement of the quality of picture. So again there are few variants into it namely a mac then b mac c mac d mac d2 mac and hd mac okay so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 all together we are having six variants that are available for MAC standard. 
So, one by one we will see where they are used and where they were developed. So, the first one is a Mac, it was just a test bed for Mac standard, means it is the most basic one, the diagram that I have shown you, it is nothing but test bed for Mac standard, it was developed for just testing the Mac standards. So, the basic one is a Mac, okay. the second one is B Mac. So, the B Mac was mostly used in South Africa, Australia and Asia. So, the B Mac was the improvised version of A Mac. Okay. Then the third one is C Mac. It was used for purpose of mostly for wide screens. It was useful and mostly used as a standard of transmission for the wide screens. So, talking about now DMAC, it was a bit much more improvised version of these MAC standards. Again, it is a, a standard or a variant of MAC that was developed by British satellite broadcasting but it was not used for cable systems this dmax standard was popular enough. Why I am saying it was popular enough was because it was used by one of the most um, recognized companies in Norway. It was named as NRK. You can note this down. It was used by Norway's NRK company. The full form of this NRK is Norwegian Broadcasting Company. So, it is a government owned radio and TV public broadcasting company in Norway. Okay, It is a government owned radio and TV broadcasting company in Norway. So, why were they using DMAC? Because DMAC contains four channels into it. DMAC was holding four channels into it. It is one of the features of the DMAC standards. So, it was possible for the company to transmit three radio channels and one TV channel by using a single DMAC. Now, the fourth one we are coming towards the D, D. So far our chapter is concerned, we are going to study D2 Mac in detail in our chapter. So, this is one of the important standards of Mac, Mac, uh, Mac standards. Then, the change or the improvisation that we are going to get into D2 Mac as compared to DMAC is that it is having minimized audio channels again. It There were four audio channels into uh, DMAC whereas D2 Mac is having only two audio channels to it. Then it was used up to July 2006 in Scandinavia. Okay. Then in middle of 90s it was used for German and French satellite TV systems up to mid of 
90s okay and some cable systems also use d2 mac in europe cable systems also use d2 mac in europe so this was about d2 mac so now talking about hd mac so hd is high definition so we understood now this word means this variant of mac was developed for purpose of hd tv transmissions so it was possible to obtain the resolution of 2048 multiplied by 15 1152 resolutions so that is we can say 2048 by 1152 resolution this scale of resolution was obtained with the help of hd mac so with this here we have seen what were, what are the mac variants that comes with the mac standards so we have finished here the basics of mac signal whereas we are also going to see the mac signal encoding format after this so up to now we have seen what is the basics of mac signals and what is the need of mac signals we are going to see now let us know first of all what is the or what are the needs of mac encoding we are studying mac encoding into which we must know first of all what is the need of mac encoding need of mac encoding so what happens into mac is the luminance and chrominance information that is present in each and every line is being scanned and is transmitted in a interleaved form so what does a mac initially uses is a interlaced scanning as we have seen in our first chapter of video engineering we already know what is interlaced scanning means one line per time per uh, means one line is scanned at a time and another one is kept alternately each lines are um, scanned into the interlaced scanning and whatever the lines that are left are again scanned from start that is nothing but interlaced scanning now what does the mac do is mac uses interlaced scanning and the whatever luminance or chrominance related information that is being present into the each line is scanned and it is transmitted in a interleaved form interleaved form means one part is transmitted one part is kept blank then again it is transmitted one is kept blank so we can say alternately it is transmitted that is in a interleaved form so firstly what we understood into uh, means what we understood what happens in mac encoding is it uses interlaced scanning okay then whatever luminance and chrominance info present in each line it is scanned in interleaved form as we know there are two types of phonic sounds that is present with us one is monophonic another one is stereo phonic sound okay one is monophonic and another one is stereophonic sound so now what happens a separate additional carrier for monophonic sound is required and two separate uh, sound carrier additional sound carriers are transmitted for the stereophonic sound so at this time there are chances 
of interference between these carriers as now we understood it uses two additional carriers sorry uh, one additional carrier for monophonic and two additional carriers for stereo stereophonic sound so what happens is when these many carriers are involved into a signal transmission these carriers may interfere with each other and which can cause to the cross color effect cross luminance effect and these kind of errors are obtained on the high saturation areas on the screen okay high color saturation areas on the screen so to eliminate this we need to use a mac system so mac as we already know it includes component into it the name itself tells that it includes component into it so that is and component means it is sent separately means the video content is basically sent separately the sound carriers are sent separately so there is no much interference into these carriers that is going to lead towards the errors so as now you have understood what is the need of mac encoding one more advantage of mac encoding is that it can introduce means it has already introduced a feature into it that is digital video effects means there are certain video parts you can give a certain sort of video effects to it why because as we have already known now video con components are separately com uh, compressed into it means a luminance and chrominance in the form of a video component is separately compressed then they are placed together on the same line with the sound signals so that is the reason here what we can do is we can use the uh, mac system uh, means we can use the digital video effects into the mac systems as there is no much interference of the sound signal over here at last it is placed with the sound signals so that is the basic need of mac encoding now we will see what is the encoding of mac we have studied already what is the need of mac encoding now we will see what is the encoding of mac this is the encoding format of mac one by one you will uh, get cleared with the concept as i tell you few points of this encoding you will understand the meaning of this entire uh, format diagram okay so first of all what happens into mac encoding is that already we know now luminance and chrominance has been separately compressed into uh, uh, is separately compressed in mac systems now it is done or it is multiplexed using the tdm technique so what is tdm technique we already know it is a time division multiplexing means that means those chrominance and luminance signals are already in a separate time domain so there is less interference that is going to take place while the transmission of signal and they send as a separate components so that means what it will in, uh, eliminate the interference next mac system uses frequency modulation with upper channel bandwidth of 24 megahertz and operates in 12 gigahertz frequency band so what does the mac system uses it uses a frequency modulation for this for the upper channel of bandwidth 24 megahertz and operates in 12 gigahertz frequency band then the scanning period of a horizontal line in any television system is uh, means any television system that has been currently used is 64 microseconds and the color and the brightness signals into it are transmitted sequentially using the time division multiplexing the reason behind using this time division multiplexing is that the chrominance and luminance are sent separately no doubt but at the same time it is not overlapping with the sound because already the luminance and chrominance these are the video components and they are placed in a time domain okay next according to the digital com uh, component studio standard the scanning frequency for luminance signal is scanning frequency for luminance signal is 13.5 megahertz whereas for chrominance 
the scanning frequency is 6.75 megahertz now as we know what are the scanning frequencies of luminance signal and chrominance signal again we are uh, considering uh, its compression factor depending upon that scanning frequencies that are defined by the digital component studio standards then the compression factor for luminance signal is 1.5 whereas for the chrominance it is exactly its double that is 3 okay then chrominance signals are time com uh, compressed by factor of 3 so what happens here now the sampling frequency given is 6.75 megahertz right for chrominance as we have seen for luminance it was 13.5 megahertz now here it is 6.75 for chrominance so with this we understand that chrominance signal are multiplied time compressed with the sampling rate of 6.75 with the compression factor of 3 so now what happens is 6.75 into compression factor is 3 so what do we obtain so this is the sampling rate that we obtain that is 20.25 megahertz with the help of the scanning frequency 6.75 and the compression factor dependent upon the scanning frequency when these two things are multiplied we get the sampling rate that is 20.25 megahertz for what for the chrominance signal when it is uh, compressed or we can say when it is time compressed by given factors like sampling uh, like uh, scanning frequency and compression factor after this this chrominance signal is then multiplexed in a sequential manner now you know there are the two coordinates it is u and v for the chrominance signal that gives us the chrominance color difference also and that is there is a luminance signal that is denoted with y now what happens here is once the chroma signal has been multiplexed in a sequential manner after that uh, there is a scanning period of 64 microseconds as we know of each line into this this u and v that is the coordinates of the uh, chrominance signal that uh, also shows us the color difference are going to occupy the first 70 uh, uh, sorry 17 microseconds from 64 microseconds as you have seen here this is the color difference that is v and u that are the coordinates of chrominance so here you can see 74 microseconds from the entire 64 microseconds range of scanning period is been occupied by the chrominance signal then which is followed by 34 microseconds of luminance signal okay this is how in a separate format uh, that is in the component format the mac encoding takes place whereas u signal that is the chrominance signal is transmitted during the odd lines of a picture that is u that is chrominance goes for the odd lines of picture whereas luminance y goes for even lines of a picture okay this is how alternately it goes so we have understood now how in a component format first the video components are sent over the sound signals okay we have completed with the encoding of uh, encoding of max signal with this how the interlaced scanning is taking place into the uh, MAC encoding.
along with what are the compression factors, what are the frequencies, scanning frequencies, how we got the sampling rate, simultaneously how u and v that is co uh, coordinates of chrominance are going to obtain the first place of 17 microseconds. This is going to obtain the 17 microseconds from 64 microseconds whereas luminance y is going to obtain the 34 microseconds from the range of 64 microseconds that is followed to the u and v of chrominance signal. Here you can see this color difference luminance 17 microseconds and 34 microseconds. This is where we have completed the MAC encoding.